I'm Trudy Haynes. Welcome back to Good Day, Good Health. And Dr. Gibbons, I'm glad you're here with me. But we have a celebrity among yes, us today. Yes, we do, today, Trudy. Dr. Masai Smith. And I'm only going to say Smith once because in publications and on television, he's known as Dr. Masai. Yes. And he's written a book. And he's also been quoted as what? Philadelphia Daily News Sexy Single. <laughs> We don't want to embarrass you, but honey, we need you. Yeah. <laughs> we need you both as a good-looking black male and as that. a podiatrist. Thank you. And tell us, I know I've been saying my feet hurt, my mm -hmm. feet hurt, mm -hmm. but most people say their feet hurt and yes. mean something else. Well, it could be serious. It, it, could be a, it could be a lot of things. You know, Dr. Gibbons knows that a lot of patients don't come to the doctor until they have serious issues. And what I do um, as a foot health professional is try to get out there in front of these things and tell people, look, if you have foot issues, you know, come see us, especially because we're talking about diabetes. You know, people don't take the numbness and tingling uh, serious. They don't take checking your bottoms of your feet at the end of the evening serious. And a lot of times I see those things at the end, at the end result, and it's very dangerous, very dangerous. We don't think about going to yes. a foot doctor. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring it down it's to the really, really like that. That's it. But we don't think about it. We think we can soak it, yes. change shoes, take the shoes off, Absolutely. and that everything is okay. But what are the symptoms? Well, when you talk in terms of diabetes, if you're, you're talking numbness and tingling uh, with the diabetes, the excess sugar in the system, uh, I, always, I always put it like this in layman's terms for my, for my uh, patients, it kind of short circuits the nerve. So the nerve doesn't function properly. So you feel the pins and needles. You feel the burning sensations. You feel sometimes the complete numbness. And, um, and sometimes you have other issues that the primary care physicians will diagnose, like peripheral vascular disease, when you have excess swelling in the feet and things of that nature. But then a lot of things come with that, dryness of the skin, you know, um, propensity for the nails to become thick, brittle. And we, we've all seen those. And, mm -hmm. and that could be a result of diabetes sometimes as well as circulation issues. Sounds like a lot. It's a lot. But it now, what are some of the other areas that you had? You gave me a long list of things. Oh, that the you things wanted. we're talking about. Yeah. Well, there, there are a lot of common elements uh, ailments that go on on the feet, and we talk about we talk about nail fungus, and we just touched that on that a second ago. Uh, we talk about general diabetes in the feet. We talk about ingrowing toenails, which are extremely dangerous right. in terms of diabetics. Um, as patients get older, they're usually a little bit smarter, and I'll say, and I'll tell you why I'm saying that. Usually when Older individuals or more mature individuals get ingrown toenails. As soon as they start to feel that pain, they go get it fixed, whether they're diabetic or not. Or they, uh, if they're women, they probably if they're women, get a pedicure. <laughs> right, right. But they usually get it treated immediately. I wouldn't recommend a pedicure for sure. They would come see a, a specialist. But uh, younger individuals, when we talk about the different types of diabetes, especially the younger folks, the problem with that, the issue that we have there is younger folks will wait until the nail becomes nasty, ingrown, mm. infected. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you've seen that. Yeah, oh, Young teenagers take off their shoe and like, really? Right. How, long, right. how long did you wait to come see the doctor? Exactly. And, and it, in terms of diabetes, that's extremely dangerous because that nail is dirty. It penetrates the skin, it causes the infection, and a lot of young folks will think it's just a toe. They don't realize, but yes, it's just a toe, but the bone is right there, which, which can cause a condition called osteomyelitis, which is infection of the bone. That can, and if they wait too long, you're talking about infection of the bone, but then you're talking about infection of the bones of the foot as well, and can turn into other major issues. One of the important things is it's the major cause of amputation yes. in diabetics. The oh, infection, the yes, the infection can get so severe, they'll have to cut the toe off yeah. to keep it from spreading to the rest of the body. That's so what this you is do? serious. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather not. I'd rather not it get there. Oh, I really course. do. I'd rather it not get there. Because we don't realize how important that foot is. It, it, it's, yeah. the, it's the base yes, for our whole operation. It is. It well, is. what do we do? Do we? What do we do to help ourselves? Well, in terms of diabetes, I would say, well, well, first and foremost, you have to keep up with your primary care physician. You know, that, they're the gatekeepers. They, 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 they kind of direct everything and maintain your medications through them. With us, we're especially like the eye doctor and the foot doctor. Just come see us once a quarter just to take a look and see what's going on. A lot of times the diabetics will come in with issues mm -hmm. and don't, they don't know they have issues right. until we take, we, we inspect it. You know, I'm a foot specialist, so we have a, we have a different knack. We kind of get on the floor. We take a look at the bottom of your heel. Primary care doctor, you really, you guys don't really do that. Like we get, under, we get under there, you know? Yeah. And um, if somebody has a wound, we're trained in such a way, we, we just kind of get into it. You know, if somebody has a wound, I'm, I'm not excited for them having the wound. I'm excited with the opportunity to help them through That's that right. wound and, and fix it. 
So, you know, and it's a mentality when you're trained That's in true. medicine. Everybody has a different mentality of what they get excited about. And when I see somebody with an issue with diabetes and it's starting to get complicated, I love to be able to dive in there and see what I can do to help them out. You know, to not, so they don't get to the amputation or, uh, you know, all these other issues that can be really, you know, you know, cause a lot of issues. You know, I went through a lot of trouble to find you. Okay. We don't have I'm many podiatrists of color. They're so what do you have to do to get into that field? Well, it's similar to med school. I mean, you, um, you're you usually pre-med or some sort of science major. You go to a four-year program, a school of podiatric medicine. There are several uh, throughout the country, not as many as allopathic programs. And you do a residency. Uh, now it's, um, I think, 90% of uh, podiatric physicians are surgically uh, skilled. And um, really, that's it. I mean, you go through the step process, mm -hmm. process like any other medical program. It's college, uh, medical program, and residential training. Uh, we're mostly a private practice for profession, but a lot of podiatric physicians do work in the hospitals and work with bigger orthopedic groups and th or groups in general. Well, that's your upper extreme work. Mm -hmm. What do you do down here to get prepare yourself for this kind of a, a profession? When you, you're in junior high, high school, what are some of the things that these young people should look at? Oh, I, I got you. Put down the Xbox. How about that? <laughs> Put down the Xbox and really pay attention to your studies because the academics are intense and you have to prepare yourself for the program. You know, I, I was one of the, you know, I always say I worked hard. I wasn't the, the, the smartest guy in the class, but I worked extremely hard. And what I know is I had to put in more work than the average person. Know your limitations, know what you can do, and know what it takes to get you to that point. Everybody knows, it's just they may not necessarily do it. The young folks really have to focus on what needs to be done to achieve what, whatever goal may be, whether it's allopathic physician, whether it's podiatric physician, whether it's op optometry, it doesn't matter. Whatever you decide to do, just work at it. It Trudy, takes effort. Yeah, Trudy, you look anxious. We are going to have to have a series of programs mm -hmm. to let people know, young people know, about the opportunities in the health professions. It's one of the biggest industries in America. And we're losing We're it. underrepresented. The opportunities are unlimited in Philadelphia. I think we need to go back to shadowing doctors in the community. In the old days, in order to get into medical school, you had to go, and they still use that. A doctor in your community has to write a letter of recommendations. I've written two in the last six months. We really have to start an outreach. You and I know, Trudy, Sam Evans was a giant in terms of health professional training. We've got to re-pick up that mantle. The numbers are declining, yeah. and they're declining because we're not working together, and our young people aren't picking up the mantle to fill the spots. Where are you located now? You I mean, can't I know. You. Thank you. I'm, in, I'm on Winfield <laughs> Avenue in Philadelphia. I'm oh. on Winfield Avenue, right, uh, right, right near the, uh, right off of Belmont Avenue. So, so we can call and make an appointment. Absolutely, I'm easy to find. Uh, okay. DrMasai.com, D-R-M-A-A-S-I.com. And you've written a book. What's in the book? I have, Feet Naturally, A Healthy Guide to, uh, to Foot Health, to Foot Care. Um, mm -hmm. Just what I did was I just found a, a lot of natural ingredients that uh, a lot of people write about, a lot of people talk about, especially my patients. You'd be amazed some of the things they no, come no, in no, with. No, no, I kept that one up. <laughs> well, well, I mean, yeah, I, I, like one, one, one of the patients said to reduce, reduce edema in their legs, they would do like a dandelion tea. Mm. Have you ever thought about that? No. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, it's, it, the, my book could be three times as big as what it is. I mean, just because there are so many different uh, natural treatments out there, uh, vinegar for foot odor as well as foot mm. fung fungus because, oh, of the, really? because of the acidity and it, it creates a bad environment. Uh, you have for cold feet, cayenne pepper. Mm, yes, uh, I've that. talked about bananas and aspirin creating a paste to, to help soften calluses to have those, you know, to remove those a little bit easier. There's a lot of stuff out there. Oh, <laughs> Sounds good. He's, he's just getting started. <laughs> and we'll be right back after this message. 